The Eddie Bracken Story with Bill Demarest and Ann Rutherford. <laughs> On the golden scroll of history's list of great educators, no name shines so brightly as that of Professor Horatius Brackenby, whose lifelong creed was, Silicent insano nemo in amore vida. Or to put it bluntly, everybody in love is blind. Which may have been responsible for the good professor's habit upon meeting an unusually pretty girl of remarking, Uro contra cato modestum amatorum, Miss Constance. At which, being up in her study, she would inquire... Would you do me a big favor, Professor Brackenby? Naturally, the gentlemanly professor could not respond otherwise than... Qui non vol fieri, desidiosis amet. I'd be very glad to. And then would be heard the voice of her father speaking in the purest of Latin... Et gay, out gay, of ear hey, you open say her tree! <laughs> But this is the story of a descendant of Professor Brackenby. And if you didn't understand what Professor Brackenby said, you won't understand what his descendant says either, for he seldom understands himself. Yes, this is the story of Eddie Bracken. Today, when Eddie Bracken meets a certain lovely young lady and she inquires... Eddie, would you do me a big favor? Eddie also has a classic answer. Gosh, sure, Connie. I'd be glad to. Which goes to prove silly scent in Sano Nemo in Amore Widet. Everybody in love is blind. What I really wanted to ask, Eddie, was, would you do me two favors? Why, sure, Connie. You know, I'd be glad to do any... any... Two favors? Uh Uh-huh. Oh. Is that asking too much? Well... Gee, Connie, I don't know. Always getting enough trouble doing you one favor. Well, if you don't want to, Eddie, just say so. I can always ask Otto. Yeah, I know. Well, okay. Let me have them. But one at a time. Well, to begin with, I want you to enter my picture in the beauty contest. The beauty contest? The one sponsored by the Bonton, the new dress shop. Oh. They're going to put the pictures of the contestants in the window, and the customers vote for the most beautiful girl. And the winner gets a choice of any evening gown in the store, and I thought I'd like to wear it to the dance Saturday night. <laughs> you mean you're... Uh, who, who, who's going to take you to the dance? Otto or me? Well, I can't go with anyone if I don't have a new evening gown. Otto or me? <laughs> All you have to do is take this envelope, it's got my picture in it, down to the Bonton and tell them you're entering it in the contest. You see, a contestant can't enter her own photograph. Otto or me. (laughs) Wouldn't you like to see the picture, Eddie? Yes, Connie, but I... I... Here it is. Oh, look out now, don't crinkle it. Oh, don't worry, I'll be careful. Oh, gee, that's pretty. Oh, I never saw this one before. Connie, how does that dress stay up? <laughs> Never mind that. Now, just take this picture and see... Otto or me? <laughs> Eddie, hmm? if you wonder how that dress in the picture stays up, wait till you see the one I picked out at the Bonton dress shop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the picture down. Thanks, Eddie. And now the second favor. Oh, yeah. There were two. Yes, but but this one is more serious. It involves Papa. Goodbye, Connie. (laughs) Eddie Bracken, come back here. Will you listen to me? Papa's in trouble. Huh? There's a woman staying at the hotel. Her name is Mrs. Hockenbacken. Don't tell me your father's in love again. Of course not. Mrs. Hockenbacken's suing Papa's company because she bought some candy at the Busy Bee candy store, Uh and it made her sick. And Papa carries the Busy Bee's insurance, and if she wins the suit, his company will have to pay $10,000, and he'll lose his job, and... Oh, Eddie, poor Papa is just sick. Your father is sick? With worry. Mrs. Hockenbacken's sick. So she says... Something tells me I'm going to be sick. <laughs> well, after all, Eddie, I, I was only trying to do you a favor. Do me a favor? Yes. By having me do you a favor? Eddie, listen. 
You know how Papa's always saying you'll never amount to anything. Uh -huh. How he's always calling you a lunkhead and turtle puss and grabbing you by the necktie and throwing you out of the house. He doesn't like me. <laughs> it isn't that he doesn't like you, Eddie, but... Look, suppose you could help him win this case. Uh -huh. Help him keep his job. Uh -huh. Why, Papa would be overwhelmed. And what a kick you'd get out of it. <laughs> Is that good? Don't you understand, Eddie? He'd be your friend for life. What do you want me to do? Go over and ask Mrs. Hockenbachen about her stomach. Oh, sure, Connie. I, I... Her stomach? Yes. <laughs> I mean, find out if she's really sick or just pretending. Now, if she's just pretending, Papa can win the case, don't you see? Yeah, I see, all right, but how do I go about checking up on her stomach? Eddie, if you don't want to do it, just, just say so. Oh, I do, Connie, but... Thanks but, a million, Eddie. But, Let me know how you make out. But, and don't forget to take my picture to the Bonton. Goodbye. But, 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 Connie... <laughs> What'll she say? What'll I say to her? How do you do, Mrs. Hockenbach? And how's your stomach? Well, what'll she say? My stomach? Why, you? Hello? Who? Long distance? Oh, yes. Put him on. Hello. Hello, Mr. Quimberley. How are you, boys? How do you do, Mr. Monaghan? What do you want, lunkhead? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Not you, Mr. Quimberley. How's that? Yeah. The case goes to trial this afternoon. Mrs. Hockenbachen? She won't even talk to me. No, I don't think there's a chance of a settlement. But, Mr. Quimberley, I know, but... But, boys, but, boys... Have a heart. Hello, hello, hello... The old sour push. What are you doing here? Well, I, 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 I just wanted to see Connie. I, well, she ain't here, so scram. Uh, yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Monaghan. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Huh? Come back here. Yes, Mr. Monaghan. Eddie, when I was a boy, I used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and milk the cows. Oh, I tried that once. I couldn't do it. Milk cows? No, get up at 5 in the morning. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. All my life I've worked and slaved and tried to get somewhere in the world. And now, just when I think I've got a nice home and a good job, a screwy dame by the name of Hockenbachen comes along and that... Hey, I got it! Huh? Eddie. Yes, Mr. Monaghan? Do you like candy? Oh, oh yes, Mr. Monaghan. Well, here, here. Here's a nice fresh bag full for you. Come on, help yourself. Oh, gee. Gee, thank you. Oh, boy. Chocolate-covered peanuts. Wait a minute. Stop chewing them. But you said they were for me. Don't chew them. Swallow them whole. Swallow them whole, but Mr. Monaghan, I... I said don't chew them. <laughs> Not by the next time, Mr. Monaghan. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the matter? I swallowed them. Whole? Yes, sir. Good. Come on. There's not a minute to lose. Huh? Where are we going, Mr. Monaghan? To the doctor before it's too late. The doctor? Too late? If that hockenbacker dame's telling the truth, you're dying. <laughs> Doc, Doc, we got to see you right away. See here, Mr. Monaghan. I'll not have you bursting into my private office with all those other patients waiting. I tell you, Doc, this is a matter of life and death. Life and death? Who's dying? I am. <laughs> oh. What happened? An accident? No. He wouldn't let me chew him. <laughs> he wouldn't let you... What are you talking about? The peanuts. I was walking down the street and I met Connie and she asked me to do favors and I get in trouble when I do a one and now I'm doing a two and this is one and I had to swallow them whole and the beauty contest is the other and I'm going to die on account of it. See? <laughs> Look, Mr. Monaghan, you explain. He only confuses me. Doc, you're the medical examiner of our company. And you know how important this Hockenbachen case what is. What does the Hockenbachen case have to do with his dying or chewing or whatever he's doing? I'm dying and he's making up poems. <laughs> Shut up. You see, Doc, it's like this. 
Oh, no. I got it. Don't mean it. I... Would you mind speaking a little louder, please? <laughs> Shut up. You'll keep out of this. I, I, my life. I... Well, well, I oh, declare. See, so you get the idea? Yes, I do, uh, Mr. Monahan. Uh-huh. And it's a very clever plan. A very clever plan. Well, yeah. Uh, now then, Eddie, take off your shirt. Are you going to operate? Well, it's uh, too early to say yet. Uh, help unbutton his shirt, Mr. Monahan. Never mind the buttons here. Oh, my new shirt. If this don't work, you won't need a shirt. And oh. I'll just uh, step up to this fluoroscope machine, Eddie. Yes, 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 sir, Dr. Barnes. And calm yourself. I yes, merely yes. want to look into your stomach. Uh, yes, 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 sir. Stand still, Eddie. Yes. yes. Mm. <laughs> Have I got long, Doc? Have a look at this, Mr. Monaghan. Oh, Mr. Monaghan, tell Connie that I... Stop I... shaking. You're making me seasick. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, I'm trying to, Mr. Monaghan. You'll have to look alone, Doc. I can't take it. Is it that bad, Mr. Monaghan? How does it look, Doc? Do you see any carp attacks? Carp attacks? No, no carp attacks. Just what I thought. Here, swallow these. Then don't chew them. Swallow them whole. Yes, sir. What are they, pills? No, carp attacks. Oh. <laughs> carp attacks? But they ain't Monahan. real carp attacks, stupid. They're made out of licorice. Licorice? Yeah, go ahead and swallow them. And don't chew them. But, Mr. Monaghan, I... I said don't chew them! Did you swallow him? Yes, sir. Good. Now take a look, Doc. Will someone please tell me what's going on here? Oh, uh, look, I'm, lame I'm... brain. Yes, sir. Mrs. Hockenbachen had some X-ray pictures showing carp attacks in her stomach. Uh-huh. She claims they were in some candy she bought at the Busy Bee. I claim she had phony ones made out of licorice so they'd show up an X-ray plate. Now, if I can prove oh. I'm right... Oh, I'm... oh, I get it. Oh, you're a very shrewd man, Mr. Monaghan. Shut up. You're... What do you see, Doc? There they are, plain as day. Ah, just what I thought. Why, that dirty crook out... They look just like real tax. They'd fool any jury in this country. (laughs) Ah, boy, oh, boy. Will I make that Hockenbacher dame look silly in front of that jury? Doc, you make an X-ray picture of them tax. Eddie, you wait here for it and bring it to me at the courthouse. Yes, sir. You know, Eddie, I finally found something I like about you. Oh, really? You have, Mr. Monaghan? What? Your stomach. Oh, sure, I remember. 
<laughs> well, I, I don't like to ask this, Eddie, but that's the only picture of me there is, and, and I'd like you to, to enter it in the beauty contest. The beauty contest? At the Bonton dress shop? Uh-huh. Barbara Connie's entering the contest, too. Yes, I heard. Of course, I know I don't have a chance against Connie. At least, I don't suppose you think so. Oh, oh, gee, Barbara, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, what I meant oh, was... Oh, I understand, she... Eddie. I don't mind. I don't think I'd ever mind anything you ever said or did. I'll stop on my way downtown and get your picture out of my room. Eddie, did, did you still keep my picture in your room? Gosh, sure, Barbara. Right on the dresser. Well, you can see it. Sure. Oh, Eddie, maybe instead of entering it in the contest, I, I'd i rather leave it right in your room. Goodbye, Barbara. <laughs> Pardon me. Yes? They told me this was the counter to leave photographs for the beauty contest. Oh, that's right. Oh, well, I'd like to leave two, please. These two envelopes. Oh, well, what about the other envelope? Oh, oh no, no. That's that's one of me. Oh, well, then no men allowed in the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Uh, write the girl's name on each envelope. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, let's see... Uh, um... Oh, this, this is Barbara. Would you like a pencil? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Barbara Funk. Mm -hmm. There, and Constance Monaghan. There you are. Oh, thank you. I I hope one of the young ladies wins the contest. <laughs> oh, she will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, he seems sure of himself. Hmm. Barbara Funk. Oh, oh, isn't she cute? Oh, she's adorable. Oh, I wonder what Constance Monaghan looks like. Hmm? What? Why, what on earth? This looks like a an x-ray picture of a stomach. Oh, oh, oh Bernice. Yes. A bird of Mr. Stenson. Yes. <laughs> Come here, have a look at this. Mr. Monaghan, what do you want? Why ain't you in the courtroom defending my interests? What do you think the company's paying you for? That's just it. The trial has started. Mrs. Hockenbachen is on the stand. You can stand out here. I'm going to wait right here until that, on the courthouse steps, until that numbskull Eddie Bracken shows up. You get back in there and object or something. But, Mr. Monaghan, she's almost through testifying. Go on, get in there. Very well, Mr. Monaghan. If that turtle push doesn't show up here, I'll, in about one minute, I'll... Oh. How do you do, Mr. Monaghan? Where have you been? Uh, I had a drop by the Bonton dress shop. Am I late? Am I late? I ought to break your neck. <laughs> you got the x-ray picture? Oh, sure, Mr. Monaghan. It's right here. It's a good thing you have. Give me that. Come on. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm hurry! Sorry. You're not by the seat of the pants, Mr. Monaghan. You have heard the testimony of Mrs. Hockenbacken. You have seen the x-ray pictures which clearly show carp attacks in her stomach. In the complete absence of any defense, I therefore move that the court find for the plaintiff in the full amount of $10,000. Just a minute. I object. What? Your Honor, if I... Get up. Your Honor, I'm going to blow this case higher than a kite. Mr. Monaghan, I'm your attorney. If you have anything... You shut up, too. The court would like to know the reason for this interruption. I got no evidence, Your Honor, and... Mr. Monaghan, I insist on being allowed to conduct this case according to my... I said shut up. You had a month to beat this rap. Now I'll take over. Mr. Monaghan... Go on and beat it. Very well. I resign. Conduct this case in your own way. But you may be sure I'll file a report on this with Mr. Quimberley. I don't care what you do as long as you get out of here and shut up. Now, Your Honor... Uh, are you a qualified attorney, Mr. Monaghan? You know darn well I'm not, Pete. But I'm a defendant, and I know my rights. I want to question a witness. Hmm. Well, you're within your rights, although your conduct is most irregular. Proceed. Eddie Bracken, take the stand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I object! Shut up. Do you solemnly swear to... Uh... <laughs> sure he does. Let's get going on with this thing. Uh, Come be on. Be seated. Uh, thank you. Oh, oops. Missed the chair. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? His uh, name's uh, Eddie uh, Bracken. Uh, yes, sir. Now, Eddie... Do you know the defendant, Mrs. Hockenbacken? Uh, yeah, I, 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 sure. I, I, I... Where did you meet her? In, in, in... A in, hotel room, right. Yes. Now, what did you talk about? Her, her stomach. Her stomach, right. 
What happened? Uh, well, see this bump? On your head? Yes. Yeah, sir. what about it? What a picture. <laughs> Your Honor, I object. I see no connection whatsoever. Will you keep quiet? <clears throat> uh, objection overruled. Thanks, Petey, old boy. <laughs> now, Eddie, did you eat anything this afternoon? Yes, sir, some pe- pe- peanuts. Peanuts, right. Peanuts. Anything else? Uh, yes, sir, some... Sir, some Dandy peanuts. carpet tank. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Did you have an x-ray picture taken of your stomach? Yes, sir. You see, I went down to Dr. Barnes... Shut up. I'll answer the question. <laughs> Pete? Pete? I, I mean, Your Honor, I got that x-ray picture right here. In Eddie Brackett's stomach, them candy carpet tacks look just like real ones. I don't think Mrs. Hockenbacken is any sicker than you are. And I ask that you throw this whole darn case out of court. I object! Shut up! Uh, <laughs> uh, court, you'll examine the picture. May I have it, please? Sure, Petey, old boy, here. Oh, oh. 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 <clears throat> uh, the uh, court will uh, fine for the plaintiff in the full amount of $10,000 damages. You can't do that, you old billy goat! And will furthermore find the defendant guilty of contempt of court. This photograph is not an X-ray of a stomach full of imitation carpet tacks. It is the photograph of a very lovely young girl. Huh? A girl? Which one? Uh, how do I know? You tell me. Well, I believe it's your daughter, Mr. Monaghan. Oh, Connie. Connie. Connie? Where's your stomach? In the Bonton window. <laughs> I can't tell you how sorry I am. I, I guess I was excited and got the pictures mixed up. And it was I, I... bad enough with Barbara winning the beauty contest. Uh-huh. With that sickening inscription on her picture. To Eddie, with all my heart. But right alongside of it, they had to put that, that awful picture with my name on it. Miss <laughs> Constance Monaghan. On your stomach. Connie, all I can say is I'm I'm sorry. And all I can say is goodbye. Nobody likes me. <laughs> Eddie. Huh? Oh, goodbye, Mr. Monaghan. Come back here. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. So Connie is sore at you, huh? Yes, sir. I don't blame her. I'd be sore, too. Well, forget it. And forget that punch in the eye I gave you after the trial. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. Monaghan. I can see just as well out of the other one. I really shouldn't have done it. You see? We won the case. We... We did? Yeah, while you were unconscious. Oh. A couple of dicks arrested Mrs. Hockenbacken as she walked out of the courtroom. She's wanted in half a dozen cities for working the insurance racket. Oh, gee, that's... that's fine. Sure glad everything turned out all right. For you. You did me a good turn, Eddie. Much obliged. The fingers, Mr. Monaghan. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure to do you a favor, Mr. Monaghan. Sometimes, sometimes you seem just like a father to me. <laughs> You're a good kid, Eddie. <laughs> Sit down. Yes, sir. Let's play a game of clabiosh. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, sure. Can I try to win? <laughs> What do you mean, win? You couldn't win if you stacked the deck. Oh, uh, here. Eddie, help yourself to some fruit. Oh. No, thank you. Uh, n- not, not an orange, Mr. Monaghan. What's the matter with you? You always like oranges. I know, Mr. Monaghan, but, but... But what? I couldn't swallow it whole. <laughs> Eddie has had his share of headaches, hasn't he? But maybe he's coming out of the woods, huh? Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll find out in a moment.
hello, Barbara. Oh, hello, Eddie. I, uh, I just thought I'd drop by and congratulate you on winning the beauty contest. Oh, thank you, Eddie. I, I guess it was lucky for me there was a mix-up on Connie's picture, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know, Barbara. Maybe, maybe you would have won anyhow. Eddie, do you really think so? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Eddie. Oh, the dress you won? Uh-huh. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, it'll look beautiful on you. I, I mean, you'll make it look even more beautiful, Barbara. Eddie! Look, Barbara, would you like to wear it on a date with me? Eddie, do you mean it? Sure, I mean it. Oh, Eddie, I, I'm so happy, I don't know what to say. Well, what about wearing it to the dance with me on Saturday night? The dance? Uh-huh. Saturday night? Uh-huh, I'll be by and pick you up at 8 o'clock, okay? Oh, Eddie. Eddie, there's anything in the world I'd rather do Oh, more. and it's all set. I, I, I'll wear my blue... The only trouble is... Oh, there's no trouble at all, oh, Barbara. Oh, I'd only know. I, I didn't think of it myself until just now. But, Eddie, just five minutes ago, I promised to go to the dance with Otto. Oh, well, I'll wear my blue serge suit and get you a... Otto! <laughs> The Eddie Bracken story is directed by Man Holliner. Music composed and conducted by Lee Harlane. Mr. Monahan is played by Bill Demarest, Connie by Ann Rutherford, Barbara by Janet Waldo. The judge by Will Wright, the woman in the dress shop by Sarah Selby. Attorney for the defense by Joe Forte, attorney for the plaintiff by Harry Lang. And the doctor by Emery Parnell, who appears with us through the courtesy of RKO. Your narrator, Jim Bannon. <laughs> This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.